in September of 2001, I was serving as an aerospace consultant, and I was part of a team that was providing consulting and advisory services for the Manufacturing Technology Office of the Air Force Research Laboratory. And on 9-11, we were attending a Mantech conference in St. Louis in one of the hotels there near the river. And we had a, a pre-meeting to uh, get together with some other manufacturing technology advisors uh, early that morning. And uh, as we were gathering there to uh, get our act together in preparation for the Mantech conference, uh, one of our members came in and said, uh, an airplane has just hit the World Trade Center in New York. And of course, you know, we, we didn't know anything. There were, so there were questions like, well, what kind of airplane was it? Uh, was the weather bad? You know, how could, how could something like that happen? And since we really didn't have uh, any information to, to share, I left the meeting and went back to my room and turned on the television. And as it was watching, I don't know if this was live or if it was a video recording, but uh, I saw the second airplane hit the second tower of the World Trade Center. And so I went back down to our meeting and informed the rest of the group that a second airplane had hit the World Trade Center. And they said, well, what kind of airplane was it? But well, it's bad weather or what? And I said, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what kind of airplane it was, but it was a big airplane, at least a 737 size. And of course it was, it ended up being a little bit larger airplane than that. But, but, but there was just a, a sense of, of disbelief among the members of our group that were there in the room. And they were saying, well, if, if the weather was good, uh, how, you know, how could this possibly happen? And, and I said, it's, it's terrorism. And the, the thing that struck me uh, at the time, and I've reflected on it since, you know, here we were, a, a small gathering of people who knew uh, aviation really well, who knew the aerospace business really well, and and yet it never occurred to, to any of the members of our group that this could be an act of terrorism. They were looking for other reasons. Was it weather related? Was was there some mechanical problem with an airplane? Uh, terrorism really never, never came to mind. Uh, that concept was just so foreign to us at the time. Well, we concluded our, our little pre-meeting and uh, the, the conference began. Uh, we, we did not yet understand the full magnitude of what had happened. So we began the conference and after uh, probably an hour or so, uh, the, the magnitude of, of what was occurring really did sink in. And so the people who were organizing the conference ended up uh, canceling it. And uh, we you know, shared what information was available at the time. Uh, but the rest of us uh, adjourned to the lobby of the hotel where they had televisions. And we watched the news as it unfolded that morning. and. Uh, there was you know, great concern, uh, not fully understanding the scope of the attack, uh, what other uh, monuments or what other uh, entities uh, or, or, or organizations around the country might be attacked. Uh, the, the hotel management uh, asked us to clear the lobby uh, so that we would uh, hopefully be out of harm's way if anything occurred there in St. Louis. We were not far from the, the arch uh, there in St. Louis, and there was some uh, thought that if there were other targets around the country that might be in jeopardy, that the arch might be one of them. So they wanted to get us uh, away from uh, any windows or, or anything like that, and put us in the interior of the hotel so that uh, if there were something to occur there in St. Louis, we would be protected at least to the extent that we could be at that time. Well, as we, we watched uh, TV uh, throughout the day, of course, uh, we, we saw the towers when they fell. And, and I personally had a, a feeling of, um, not sure quite how to describe it, but it was uh, one of, of huge disappointment 
that um, it was apparent that the attackers, the terrorists, were successful in that they brought down uh, both towers of the World Trade Center, whether that was their intent or not, uh, that was certainly the effect. And it was um, a, a great feeling of emptiness and, and somewhat of helplessness, helplessness as, as well. Uh, that this attack had occurred, you know, that we were unable to prevent it, and that uh, at least uh, to the extent of the information that we had available to us at the time, uh, it was successful. Uh, we also uh, obviously you know, heard about, found out about uh, the airplane that uh, hit the Pentagon uh, that morning and later were informed of uh, the, the aircraft that uh, the passengers apparently were successful in taking down in Pennsylvania, so at least that portion of the attack was averted. Uh, of course, all air travel was suspended at the time, and uh, we were uh, trying to figure out how, how we're gonna get back home. And Scott Air Force Base is not far from St. Louis. It's across the river over in Illinois, and it's the home of the Air Mobility Command, which, uh, operates most of the transport aircraft within the uh, Air Force and we knew that military aircraft could still fly although civilian aircraft were grounded and uh, at the time uh, one of uh, the members of the senior staff there in Air, Mo Air Mobility Command was uh, a friend of ours he was actually my vice commander when I was the commander of the Ogden Air Logistics Center and so I called him and asked him if it were possible to get on any aircraft that they might have that were headed west. And uh, he said that he, he couldn't commit to anything, of course, but he said it might be possible uh, that we could travel as a space available passenger. And so one of our of the members of our team was uh, from Dayton, Ohio. They had driven to the conference, and so air travel was not a, an issue for them. But they said they would take us out uh, to Scott Air Force Base and see if we could get a military flight uh, somewhere in, in the vicinity of Utah. And so we attempted to do that. Uh, there were there were about four of us, I think, uh, who were trying to head west. And uh, as, as we got close to Scott Air Force Base, the, the highways were just jammed. And uh, we tried a, a couple of different routes uh, to gain access to the base, but it's soon dawned on us uh, that the traffic was just so congested that it really was not going to be practical for us to continue our attempt to get to Scott. So we turned around and went back to St. Louis. Uh, I had checked out of the hotel that I was in. We checked into another hotel and then tried to figure out, uh, you know, how, how are we going to get home? Or when will the airline start flying again? Of course, all of those were unknowns at the time. So we just uh, kind of bided our time uh, there in the hotel, uh, watched the news, uh, watched uh, as things uh, unfolded. Uh, but it was a, a time of great uncertainty. I, I you know, talked with my wife uh, on a number of occasions, wanted to make sure she was okay back here in Ogden. And she, of course she was. And I wanted to let her know that, that I was okay and that I didn't know when I would be home. But um, we would, you know, get home just as soon as we could uh, safely. The rental cars were impossible to get. One option was to rent a car and try to drive uh, from St. Louis uh, back to Ogden, but it was impossible to get a rental car. So we just kind of, kind of waited, waited it out until the airline started to fly again. Um, once they did, it was, it was a little bit of an ordeal. Uh, I had flown. Uh, over to St. Louis on TWA and uh, was able to book a flight home. Uh, but when we got to the airport, the lines were just huge. And uh, we knew at the time that they had imposed restrictions, uh, no sharp objects or anything like that could be taken aboard. And uh, I had a, a small kit that included scissors and a number of other things that uh, I put in my my rollerboard with the idea that I would check that. Well, the, the lines to check baggage were just just horrendous. And 
as a result, ended up uh, getting my back checked okay, but uh, missed my flight because we just couldn't get through security uh, in time. So I got rebooked on another flight, uh, attempted to go uh, space available on one that was uh, a little bit earlier, go on standby at least. And uh, they wouldn't let me stand by on this airplane that was leaving earlier because my bag was checked on another flight and uh, was told you couldn't fly on an airplane uh, if you had baggage checked on a, a, a different flight. In other words, you had to fly on the same airplane that your baggage was checked on. But anyway, we, we were successful in getting back to, to Salt Lake City and then ultimately on to Ogden.